Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a foraged Douglas fir random weave basket. Okay. Before I start to get into the tutorial, I just wanted to give a brief introduction into why I'm doing this. So basically the long and short is because I want a reason to force myself to learn more weaving skills. I'm gonna be making a bunch of different videos that are kind of like follow alongs. So whether that be from a book or another YouTube video or like this one where basically I just kind of made it up as I went along and then ending up kind of teaching myself various things through experimentation and just kind of creation as a whole really. Okay, so first of all, collecting and foraging the materials. Like it says in the title today, it's Douglas fir. That's what I've ended up with. That's what this is here. The materials that I was foraging for had to meet a few different criteria. Firstly, it's got to be flexible, but there are lots of different varieties of things that can be flexible from, you know, willows, an obvious one. You've got hazel, dogwood, various types of pine. What I've got here is Douglas fir. That's what I'll be using today, but there are lots of different things. I would just say, like with anything to do with this in the research stage, use it as a way to experiment and to kind of teach yourself. While foraging, I came across a few different things. For example, things like the spruce, which these are examples of here. You can see I'm being quite delicate with them because this is two different types of variety of spruce. There are things like Sitka spruce, Norway spruce. The reason I didn't go for these, even though they are flexible, is because of the shorter needles, they do stab quite easily. This one is really bad for it. So I have to like carrying it home yesterday. I had a whole load of extra bits and pieces, huge things. And then I was carrying this like this to try and make, because I didn't have gloves on, to try and make sure that I didn't stab myself. A big important thing to look for when you're doing this and that was something that I knew going in was what could potentially be harmful to yourself. So I already knew that you is something that is common in the UK and also I'm pretty sure almost anything to do with the U is poisonous. Before I went out I did a bit of research in how to identify you and how to identify the things that are basically going to be poisonous to myself. But that was all I did beforehand. I then went out and I played around with things. I was like, oh, that's biker down like that. Yeah, but I have a piece, piece of this. And then that's what brought me onto this one. Oh, I wish I could have like a smell of vision. Like, oh, if you, can, if you can see this smell through there. Oh, sniff it, sniff it, everyone, sniff it. Oh, it's like pine, citrusy, just, oh, it's lovely. And also it makes lovely tea. Okay, so. Let's get started. Here's an example that I've made before. This is what we're making today, forage, foraged basket. This one was made out of dogwood. This is dogwood, this is also dogwood, and then this here, this is bramble. All of this is foraged and basically used fresh. So that's another example. Obviously this is lovely and green now. Part of my experiment for doing this project is to see how it ages over time. Um, obviously I expect a whole load of the needles will fall off um, and it will dry and it won't stay green forever. But I think that's quite part of the experiment for me in, in, in kind of the enjoyment out of it is then seeing how it will grow and develop. Again, prime examples. This is about a month old and as you can see, it's still keeping the color pretty well. I'll put an example up on screen. My very first attempt at doing this project um, I made from a weeping willow that was in Alicia's mum and dad's garden mixed with some corkscrew willow and something else which I'm not sure it was just something that had been recently cut down um, and that's what I used to make the main circle and I was really pleased with the end result and how it kind of it was almost like the basket was coming to life that's one of the reasons I think this is a great project for a beginner because you can kind of sculpt and make it up as you go along and and that's you know, you get kind of instant gratification of that playing with that. You're not necessarily just following a pattern. You can kind of play and sculpt and yeah, it's something that's really, really fun. So stop chatting, Jason, and get on with it. First of all, we need to make a circle. So you get one of your pieces, up to you whether you cut off the end like this. I've not necessarily done that. I just noticed that this camera was not recording. So I hope that it was actually capturing everything that we needed to. So. First of all, make a circle. It should curve in a particular way anyway, so you almost wanna kind of just accentuate that. Sometimes you can kind of rest it. You can't see here, I'm kind of resting it against my body as I'm twisting. But then depending on the material, that's part of experimentation, is you should just be able to twist it and it should be okay. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of supporting the, this bit, which is the more prone to potentially break. 
So I'm kind of supporting this bit because what it will want to do is shoot out that way um, while, while I then mix it in. And then sometimes I like to just like tuck it in, but you don't have to do that. By the way, I apologize if anyone can see my thumb close up. It looks disgusting. And that is because what happens when you shut your thumb in the um, car door. You could just start there, one circle. What are we gonna to do today? To be honest, I think we're gonna do that. No, we're not, no, we're not. We're gonna, I'm gonna add one more circle. So this is dependent on the thickness of your material, how thick you potentially want this kind of rim. You know, as you can see here, um, it was slightly thinner than this, but then I added about four in total to make this, um, this bit here. Again, up to you um, on how thick you wanna make it. I would then start, as you can see here, we've got this piece here. I think I would then start, can you see like this? So you're starting on the opposite side and you're weaving it in from there. Again, just trying to loosen it up. Wiggle it in. Again, I'm kind of supporting the stronger side, the edge of the material, because that's what's going to what that will want to shoot out, and it's more prone to break. You'll see that sometimes it'll it'll want to kink or something like that. I then try to just push on that kink when I'm weaving to again just almost support the weakness within it. Plus, as you're doing this, you can <clears throat> continually just kind of make sure that the shape is roughly what you want. So if that's, that means I want to sort of stretch that out a bit if it gets to be a bit more of an oval. But again, there's no kind of um, correct way to do this. That's the whole point. This is a beginner's kind of project. You're not necessarily following an exact pattern. You're just kind of having fun with it. Okay, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna just snip this off here, but you don't have to do that. I didn't do that when I made my original ones. Okay, so there we go. Here's our circle. So next, get your bowl. Now, guess what I forgot? <laughs> I remembered the cameras, the stuff. I remembered all the different bits. I forgot to take a bowl. So this is also gonna be a way of showing that you don't technically need the bowl. As long as you just kind of keep an eye on it and keep kind of moving things and sculpt as you go, you don't actually have to do this with a bowl. At least that's what I'm hoping. This is the closest to a bowl that I could find. It's a, um, kind of like an egg timer. What you're trying to do now is attach this like this and you're starting to create the framework to your bowl. I'll tell you what, I'm not even gonna use this. So then you just sort of make roughly the shape that you want. So I want it about, about there. Touch and then I'm just kind of roughly holding it with my thumb and then now I'm going to try and weave it back in to the circle. This is quite a nice thing working with Douglas fir that I'm noticing is because it kind of branches off like this it's you're in a, a quicker way almost you're creating those that framework. Um, oh snapped it never mind rather than just doing one thing at a time. So what I'm trying to do now is try and find ways in which to keep this nice and tight in here. So sometimes, as you can see there, I've just sort of prized away that bit to be able to then squeeze this piece in here. Each time you're trying to end up with something that in essence is um, you know, it's held itself in. And then there we are, there's, there's basically the start of your bowl. So you just continue until you've got a rough framework. I'm gonna pause the video there until I've done this whole section. See you in a sec. So I've been getting on with this a little while. Something that I've just kind of figured out myself is, Working with this material, it's a little bit, it's not as um, pliable as willow and things, so it was snapping a little bit easier. And I'm just trying to get it to hold in shape. Again, if you had a bowl, you could kind of tie 
maybe using something like twine or uh, maybe even this is honeysuckle and then that holds in place your it's not a bowl but let's say bowl and then that shape and then you're kind of pulling it tight to that shape and that does help you today i don't have that so i'm kind of sort of making it up as i go along but i then need to try and tie it and hold it into place what i've ended up doing is some of these extra bits that are sticking back out i've just tied them back in and kind of tried to weave them and use those as a way by tying them back into themselves as a way to help keep things in place at the moment i'm using bits that don't have as many leaves on because at the moment that, that would just i think get in the way a little bit i'm trying to kind of get my rough shape in place first but it doesn't necessarily matter too much and you might come along and realize for example i've just made a mistake and i've tied this one in here and that's too too tight so either i could try and make that part of this bit over here or i could just cut that off which is what i'm going to do so just continue and as you can see it's just it, yeah it's truly random you're just sort of trying to find ways in which of weaving things in and tying them off and making them secure as you go and you'll start to see kind of holes and gaps um, and where you can start to kind of fill those gaps basically so sometimes i'm going just straight over straight over straight over tying it back in and sometimes i'm kind of going around and depending on the material you can kind of go in and then weave back on yourself and kind of go around like this um, and some and that can be a potentially i found like a quicker way to build up your bowl as it were if you're able to kind of go back on yourself you're not having to just go like this each time so i think yeah let's have a bit of a bit of a montage and a bit of a chill session uh, the sounds of nature. something else you want to try not to do is it's, it's kind of straightforward and as you work with the material you realize how you're trying to kind of work with it and twist it um, so if you can see here instead of me I want to go in this hole so what I'm gonna then try and do is I'm kind of twisting this slightly as I go and then that is playing with the um, playing there's the right word but using the f natural fibers that are within it not necessarily fighting against them um, to in essence make a fairly tight uh, corner right there fairly tight not that's it not too tight but um, instead of just for example if i was to get this and just kind of twist it like this some things like willow and potentially if this was fresh and green you might be able to kink it what it's called by like kinking by whether that be like pressing something in here and kinking it but if i was to kind of twist and then play with it like this there's a lot stronger chance that i won't snap the material Can you see that? I'm trying to do it for the camera. I've never done a tutorial like this before by myself. So that's something as well is I just want to say thank you so much to so far all the subscribers and people that watch our content because it's, it's like a joke. I don't know whether it kind of comes across how, you know, this truly is a kind of passion project for me. It's just, I love making films and, um, I have a growing love for kind of natural crafts and most importantly meeting others and learning from others and kind of getting inspired by other creative people. It's not cost me any money to do this. 
these materials were free, were foraged. Obviously, I took them from a range of different places. I didn't just take them from one tree. You know, I was not taking too much. It's free to sit here in a public park. You know, I am thankful that places like this exist and that the members of the public are able to come and enjoy and be a part of the land. And I'm making something useful and oh, something that I'm just going to huff for days. <laughs> As I'm sure you know already, if you've clicked on the thumbnail and seen what the end result is, I haven't yet, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but I see this more of like a, you know, it's kind of like a bird's nest type basket. I had an idea originally that it was going to be quite a neat thing, but as it's grown and as it's developed, it's just, yeah, it's not going to be that. But I love it. <laughs> I love it. Definitely more fiddly. <laughs> That's what I've got now. I've seen a lot of random weave baskets. I could leave it there. Um, you know, in essence, it does what it's there to do. You know, it, it will hold various things. Totally depends on what you want to use it for. Myself, I personally, because it's going to be kind of like a scented thing, just as much as a basket, I want to get in as much as possible. So what I've been using at the moment is all the sort of thinner, uh, the longer bits, which actually I don't really have any, any left, so I can't show you. But what's left is bits like this. Um, obviously, this is gonna take me a quite a bit longer than normal because, you know, if you had a piece of willow that's kind of this long or a bit of ivy or something that's this long, obviously one piece is gonna weave, do a lot of weaving as opposed to lots and lots of little pieces like this. But we are now at the stage to add a handle if you like one. We want to basically push this in, weave it if we can, and just kind of get that pushed in, create our shape of what the handle that we want, and end up basically like this. And then what I'll then try and do, again, this might be a bit fiddly with this material, what I might do is cut this down, is then you're just weaving it back in into the structure. As you can see, I put a point in this, that makes this first bit that bit easier. Then let's cut these off as well. Just to make this first one easier to put in. Okay, find your spot. And straight away as I'm weaving, I'm trying my best to hold everything else in place, but also st straight away trying to weave in and out and in and out. Now, I think that's about as much because I think I'm going to start to damage it. So I am only going to go that far on this one. And then when I continue to weave, I will try and weave that in. I might even cut down a piece, strip it right back and literally just tie it in again, just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, and then just sort of work this so that hopefully it won't snap. I just kind of put a little bit of pressure down it. And then make roughly where you want it to go. Find a hole on the other side and start to weave. Have I said that this is fiddlier <laughs> than, than a normal basket? I think I might make another video because it will be a little bit, little bit easier to see what it is that I'm actually doing as opposed to this one. So I think I'm quite happy with that. I want it to be a little bit taller, um, maybe about as tall as that one. It's not quite centered, but what I'm thinking is I might put in this, uh, I'm not sure, I might have a go at putting in the second piece. So if you see as an example, what I did here with this one, it was I put in one piece and then starting from the opposite side, just weaving round and round and round and round. And then I put in a third piece, again, weaving round and round and round. So the end result is not only is it quite strong, it's holding itself in in various different ways, um, as opposed to, you know, there's nothing stopping me just using this one, um, especially if I'm going to just hang this up like this. This is clearly strong enough, but mm, I, I think I like the idea of maybe putting in an extra piece. But first of all, just weave this in. Oh, snapped a piece. 
never mind. Right, starting from the opposite side. I'm gonna put this in somewhere diff slightly different because as you can see, it's not perfectly centered. So what I wanna try and do is my aim is to kind of put this in at a bit of an angle so that it almost brings it back to center and then creates a space that I can add more in later. And then, now that I've put that in, I'm gonna try and put them together, put them to roughly where I want them to be and then holding this one on this side is the one that's already in and then I'm just tr gonna try and hold that in place and then this, try my best without breaking it. I just wanna try and weave it round as many times as I can. More times the better, because that will hold it in a bit better without, without snapping it, Jason. <laughs> without snapping it. Trying my best to make any bend as small as possible. So I'm reducing that chance of it snapping. And then I'm gonna come in, find a hole that's fairly where you are. This is really fiddly. If I had a uh, something called a bodkin, that might help me. Or maybe even just a pointy stick. So put it roughly in place, use my pointy stick. I'm gonna to have to stand up on this bit, sorry everyone. Just push that in. Again, can you see here, that's a weak point. So what I'm trying to do is put pressure on the weak point without my gammy thumb in shot. I'm um, trying to put pressure on the weak point to try and stop it from snapping. I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm pretty pleased with that. I think I might for this one, I want it to be quite simple. And I kind of like the difference between having this like a nest and then this just keeping it just the plain bark. On the example I'll show it on screen, now the first one that I did, I added corkscrew willow into it and kind of built it up quite a bit. My original idea with that one was that it was almost like it was coming to life, <laughs> you know, and growing with, from within itself. This one is, is similar in a way, but just it's more about the nest and then the handle on top. And I'm hoping that this could be something that could be hung and then whatever you want to put in there goes in there. Okay, keep on weaving. Keep on weaving. And that is one big plus side with this stuff is obviously it fills up a lot quicker than when you're doing it with something that doesn't have all these extra needles on. Again, I could, could finish it there, but I can just see a few more holes. So I'm just going to continue weaving on and fill in the gaps. So while I'm here, I am going to use this piece here, strip it right back, other way adjacent, strip it right back, and use this piece here to tie in my handle. When I'm doing this, I'm also trying to go in and out of other wee, 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 uh, woven bits as well um, to hide it, to hold it in place, not you know, I'm going over lots of different places rather than just the one. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making that much sense. I hope I am. Again, this is my first ever tutorial like this, so hopefully you can understand me. Hopefully you can follow along. I apologize if you can't. Let me know what I could do better next, for next time. I think I'm pretty much done. What I'm gonna do now is put in a few aesthetic bits. That's why I kind of left this. I kind of like some of the little bits sticking out. So I'm gonna find a few possible extras to almost just deliberately leave them out. And I'll give you an example of where I've done that in the past. 
can see that from above. So this is actually attached to the weave and I, and I quite like it. It's just kind of like a nice sort of finishing touch to some of the baskets. So I'm gonna put those in now. What do you think? Quite like that. Just having a little, little flourish on one side. So I'm just gonna tidy it up. Any bits that I, I say tidy it up, you know, it does look like a nest. That's kind of the point, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. What do you think? Do you know what? I'm gonna put in a few more bits. It looks a little bare there. I'm sure you're looking at this like Alicia does when most with <laughs> creative projects that you do. Your partner or your friends or whatever look at you and are like, what are you looking at? I don't understand what you're doing. But you know, you know, don't you? You get it. But sometimes you're like, yeah, well, yeah, because if I didn't put this extra piece in, it just wouldn't look right. It's, to me, it's like nine days. It's just it, 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 it's so obvious that it needs this extra little bit in there to create that extra piece of, that extra bit of depth and texture. Look at that, comes around a bit more, much nicer. One more piece, did you say? Yes, I agree, I agree. And then, I think, we might be done. What do you think? There we go. So thank you everyone for watching this. Um, if you have any questions or you'd like to see anything specific, especially random weave related, comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.